I grew up in China's first 30 years of rapid development since 1978, in the aftermath of the so-called the reform and opening up policy by Deng Xiaoping, who was regarded as the architect of modern China. And in school, English was one of the most important subjects, along with Chinese and math. I learned English when I was very young, and in my teenager memories, it was a hobby, a form of escapism. And indeed, I was very much fascinated by the world to which it belonged. The people were just so different, with auburn hair and hazel eyes, and the children, from what I've observed, were much more relaxed, at ease with themselves, confident. Which was so different from my Chinese peers, who were just like me, very competitive at school, and almost quite anxious about if we would go to the right school or if we could, in the future, get what our parents and teachers called a stable job. But soon I realized that that was just the surface that represented a different culture, lifestyles, values and ways of thinking. But little did I know that I would also find comfort and knowledge in this English-speaking world, especially in books, I have learned so many ways to look at the world and things in a way that is even contrary to the Chinese culture that I was born into. Aristotle taught me the virtue of courage and encouraged me to quit my job and pursue my dreams. And Stoic philosophers like Seneca taught me gratitude and not take little things for granted. As essential thinkers like Sartre and Heidegger, who I read in English, taught me that I was the only person responsible for my life and my future, and they inspired me to stand my own ground when people don't believe in me. And how does that have anything to do with English? Well, the knowledge and the world that I exposed myself to was in English, and altogether, they helped me find my way back to faith and a more confident and self-assured identity. And now you might be asking, then why do you say that studying English is also the worst thing in your life? Well, it all comes down to a very common weakness of humanity, our deepest desire to be understood, to connect with other people and be related to. And speaking English as a second identity sometimes make me feel lonely. And I'm not talking about the loneliness that comes from the hard work and the dedication to knowledge and language learning. But I'm talking about the kind when you slowly realize that fewer and fewer people can fully relate to the world and the things and experience that you have been exposed to. A Chinese friend might appreciate my work ethics and ambition, but they might not understand my lack of concern for social norms or want to engage with my sarcastic sense of humour and an occasionally well-meaning banter. A British or American friend might appreciate my free spirit, independence, or me laughing at their memes and bad jokes, but they might not understand that what is more important to me is humility, kindness, wisdom and having balance. And in the past, when I was younger, friends were people who only lived a few bus stops away. And now, the people that I most want to talk to and connect with live halfway across the world and operate under a different time zone. True gathering feels like a luxury, and I hate to admit it, even love can feel really hard to find. And I guess that can easily be most people's experience growing up and maturing as we charted further and further down into unknown territories, we became this more complicated, unique and idiosyncratic individual. But I also felt like this is particularly poignant for people who understand and care for languages and cultures that are far beyond their mother tongue, because then you develop empathy for the highlights and the pains of other peoples. And in turn, the world is a richer, a more colourful and a more abundant place with more possibilities to listen, connect and love. And so my biggest hope for you and for me is to turn this pain and confusion and loneliness into strength 
and find faith and hope while we are still in search of the tribes with hearts that shine just like our own.